Today is uh, Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. It is the Zoom Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for the town of Easton. Um, before we get started, uh, while the board members and commissioners and applicants will be on video, public participants will join the webinar as ed attendees, meaning they are muted and with no video feed from them. I can bring you in to um, participate, though, uh, if, if you raise your hand. During the public testimony portion of the meeting, members, hang on just a second. Um, if everybody can mute that's on the panel, um, only because there's some feedback coming at the moment. Great. Um, during the public testimony portion of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using the raise hand function found under the participants uh, or make a request through the Q&A function. If you are joining only by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. I will see that come up on my screen and I will admit you as a panelist to, to talk. Um, as in any public meeting, indecent behavior will not be tolerated and anyone who uses the use of the meeting platform will be terminated. Um, board members are asked to announce themselves when making the motion and second so that it will be clear to the audience and the minute takers who made the motions and all votes will be by roll call. So without further ado, uh, we have 630 public hearing special permit 21-13 applicant is seeking a permission to seeking permission to demolish an existing home and construct a new single family home for property located at 415 Center Street. Mr. Secretary, if you'd like to read the advertisement and any comments, please. Sure will. <clears throat> the Eastern Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, March 9th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. to be held remotely on the petition special permit William Humphrey for property located at 415 Center Street, Eastern Mass, Assessor's Map 38U, Lot 3A, for a special permit pursuant to Eastern Code Post Chapter 235 Zoning, Section 235.25A, Subsection 3, and Section 235-56 as follows. Applicant seeks permission to voluntarily demolish an existing single family home on a substandard lot and construct a new home on the lot that will meet all building setbacks. This notice is also available at masspubliknotice.org. And here are the comments. Historical Commission, uh, not applicable. Uh, comment was existing house is less than 75 years old and not subject to demolition review. Affordable housing, not applicable. Fire department recommended. Uh, comment was no comment or concerns. Captain Desalio, planning and zoning recommend. They did have a comment. Planning and zoning board reviewed the request for special permit on uh, number 21-3 to demolish the existing structure at 415 Center Street and rebuild a new home fronting Camden Drive. The planning board recommends the applicant the application and while the board would have preferred to see the replacement home remain facing Center Street, the ask that the special permit is granted the decision include a condition that the rear yard provide vegetated landscape buffer to Center Street. And those are all the comments. Okie doke. Um, just for clarification, we just lost Ryan. So uh, sitting on the Hearing will be Tim McCall, Ed Watson, John Curran, Jeremy Kay, and myself. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Sorry. Okay. Ryan, you in? You there we go. All Sorry, right. we good? Okay. You put a panelist in it like locked up. <laughs> Sorry. So it's well, okay. We got we got you. So um Ryan, why don't you sit on this and, and Jeremy, uh, you can you can be the, the alternate on this one, okay? Thanks. Um Bill, why don't you uh, go ahead and make your presentation? Um, you know there are there are members of the homeowners association I know that are that are here and want to talk. Are you aware before you start of the the letter we received? Yes. Okay. So to the extent you want to address any of the questions, concerns, or issues in your initial presentation, great. If not, we can walk through it afterwards. 
Okay. Well, where are you going? Yep, William Humphrey, 23 Mullen Lane of Easton. And uh, for the board, uh, I heard a comment earlier that it's uh, a member said that it's a private way. It's not. I built Lexington Estates. I'm the developer, designer. Uh, it's a public way. And uh, when 415, back uh, when I first uh, developed Lexington Estates, uh, I, there are two other lots that have uh, right away to Camden Way. One is uh, Ray Key's lot, which uh, my son's purchasing, which is 415. And then there's another lot there that has frontage that eventually somebody will probably be doing the same thing. And um, building on to this, again, because it's a, pi a public road, a public way. And this lot, uh, according to Walter Marioni, I have every right to be able to use the public way because it's a public way. And everybody that we're talking to, it's the citizens of Easton and not citizens of Easton that have the rights to this public way. So I did uh, look at the concerns for the neighbors, and I addressed that, and you'll see that I downloaded a letter from Frank Riblin. You'll see uh, uh, it's uh, other, under other info, I believe. I can read it to you if, you if you can't find it. I can read it out, what he said, addressing uh, drainage issues. Mm -hmm. so, but what I want to get into mostly is the reason we're doing this is a couple of reasons. Uh, my son, who uh, I raised in the town of Easton, wants to be in a subdivision lot. Subdivision lots are very hard to find, uh, especially in Northeastern. So when this lot came up in the market years ago, I worked with Ray, uh, was going to send me this, sell me this lot, and unfortunately his wife passed away, and uh, so he stayed there. So unfortunately, uh, we don't need to get into what happened to Ray. I think a lot of people know what happened. But um, it was always my intention to uh, work with him in the future to buy that. Now, when I developed uh, Lexington Estates, unfortunately, that parcel, I couldn't make part of an HOA because I didn't own it. So I wanted the people that lived in there to, uh, when I designed it, to take care of the, uh, to make sure it's, it's a beautiful subdivision. I wanted to make sure they took care of the landscaping, et cetera. That's why I created the HOA. But um, with this particular lot here coming up uh, on the market and buying, I saw it as a good opportunity for my son to get into a subdivision in Easton. Right now, he lives at 12 North Main Street. I have two grandchildren. It's a very busy street, and I don't feel comfortable with a three-year-old or two-year-old driving on bicycles down onto North Main Street, if you know where my son lives. It's up on the elevated driveway. But that was one of the houses that I built uh, two years ago. So when this came up, uh, I talked to my son about it. He's very excited to be able to do that. And um, first thing that we said when we looked at it, he says uh, to me, because it's a large lot, it's 30, over 37,000 uh, square feet, the lot you look at, it, it's just barely under a buildable acre, uh, and it doesn't have the frontage 150 foot. That's why I'm before you guys. But um, right now, if, you, if you're familiar with the lot, you'll look um, across the street from this lot is a new home, large size, about 3,400 square feet or so. It's my old business partner's son. He built the house for it. Now, the, bat, the problem with it is where the driveway comes out onto Center Street, it comes right across to the Center Street, to the driveway at 415 Center Street. And very dangerous. So if you had somebody pulling out of uh, Brian Griffith's lot, which is across the street, and my son's new house, you're coming out onto a road where the speed limit is 45 miles an hour in a direction going along west going south i believe towards the towards the monument it's 45 miles an hour you're pulling out and there's two driveways coming out onto the road it's very dangerous so uh, my son this is a good situation where for, for my son where i can create a subdivision lot and have it not be dangerous where you're pulling out onto center street so one good thing is we're stopping a uh, issue, uh, traffic issue, and I talked to the town about this. I, I go and talk to everybody, talk to the police department about this, etc. before going forward with this, and they were very excited that I wasn't doing that. So uh, I decided that, you know, this would be a good lot for my son. I'll build a house that emulates the houses that are in Lexington Estates and uh, get them into a subdivision. It'll be safe. So, a bunch of things I'm doing as you read through what uh, I wrote to the board under uh, one through six. So, uh, I'm getting rid of a, a, a traffic issue, that, that is a traffic issue right now. 
and um, I'm also putting in a new septic system. I'm building a house that is now, is, uh, you guys, I'm sure are aware that East End is a stretch code town, meaning that our homes that are built in East End are far more uh, better insulated, better, more environmentally friendly than other towns around, which is, so you're building a house that's uh, environmentally friendly. In other words, you're not going to have high energy bills, not high electric bills, not high heating bills, water usage, et cetera, because the new way you build homes uh, that's what the town of Easton, when they accepted the stretch code. So here we are building a new house on a lot that's going to be built in stretch code. So it's better for the environment. Safety issues, you're not pulling out into Center Street. You're pulling out into a subdivision. So, this is, so that's very safe. We're putting in a new septic system instead of the one that's there that has failed. So we're putting in a new septic system. That, again, it helps the environment, obviously. So I can go keep going into these here, uh, talking about what's going on. It's just I think it's a win-win for the town and for the neighborhood. Um, I did address some of the things in talking to Walter Marion on the issues that the neighborhood has. But um, talking with Walter, he said, Bill, don't really get into it that much. He says, this is a private conversation you should have with the association because it's a public way. The lot's not part of Lexington Estates. So realistically, it's not a part of Lexington Estates. They have rights to use the road at Camden Way. But my son, here I have, I built the subdivision. I'm proud of what I built there. I've won awards for the subdivision. So obviously, anything I'm going to build in there, I'm going to do a nice job. I'm not going to build something and go, look what Bill Humphrey does. He builds a subdivision, and then he puts a home that doesn't emulate what's in there. So the home that I'm building, you can see the plans there. It has stone in the front, um, nice, nice roof lines. It's uh, close to 3,000 square feet. It basically matches what's in the subdivision. I know in the letter that you got from the HOA, from the homeowners, etc., I can't get into that. Uh, Attorney Marioni told me not to. He said, Bill, that's a private thing that you have with the homeowners. They don't have any rights over this lot. You're a different, you're not part of that. So I really don't, if, I hope you guys can respect what I'm saying. I can't get into that. That's a private meeting that I will have with the uh, HOA. So um, I also, they had, but they did have some concerns. They said, what about uh, drainage issues? So I want to address that because I think that's the most important thing uh, on their letter as of right now. So uh, one was about lot number four. Oh, one other thing also with um, what the... Uh, planning board stated about putting a buffer behind the house. If you were to drive down Center Street and look at lot number four, basically I'm doing the same thing. If you're in Center Street looking at lot number four, you can't see lot, house number four. What I do is I put in a landscape burn fencing, how, bring in 20-foot uh, high trees, and I block it out, and they basically become part of the subdivision. But that was a 4 a lot before. There used to be a, a, a home there also, which I tore down. But I'll create a buffer not only to um, – plenty board says they didn't want to see the back of a house driving down Center Street, and that's my intent. That's what I'm going to do. So I have no issues with that. I think that's a great idea, and that's what I was going to do anyway. So – that part, I, I agree with them on that. But uh, regarding the drainage, Frank Rivlin is the one who did the design uh, in the engineering. Him and Walter Hermano were the ones who did the design of Lexington Estates. Again, they, here they are doing the engineering for me on this lot. So they're very well aware of the drainage, et cetera. There's a letter in there from Frank Rivlin that will, that will read what's going on, that talk about what's going on. There's no impact whatsoever of this house going in there. In fact, the water that goes off the lot right now goes on to Camden Way. I'm going to actually decrease it a little bit because I'm going to knock the hill down that's down there where the house will be going. And most of the water will be running back onto the lot. So the drainage issue is if you read the letter from Frank Rivlin, if you don't have it, I can read it. I can bring it up on my iPhone and read it if you'd like. I, I, I'm going to actually share it on my okay. screen, Bill. So you have a Michael. Um, All right, good. Because I think it just, if I, if, if I'm assuming I can pull this off, um, because I think it just got loaded today. And that's and true. Because I saw the I saw the concerns. I was brought up to my attention from Suzanne. Brought me up to the attention on this too, uh, which I thought was great to uh, look at these this information yesterday afternoon. So I addressed it and got hold of Frank today. Let me see. 
Okay. I'm opening it up too at the same time. I okay. Everybody's trying to open it up. That's why it's I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I have it open on my screen. I got it open too. Okay. I'm just not. Oh, there you go. You want me to read it, Michael? I don't mind. It's short. Yeah, why don't you? Well, I try okay. to figure this out. Thanks, okay. Bro. So it says it's addressed to me, Bill. The direction of the drainage, drainage flow is not changed by this construction. Currently, there is a slight ridge on the lot right through the center line of the proposed house with everything west flowing towards Camden Way and everything eastly flowing towards Center Street. This is the same direction the flow proposed by the construction. So the pre-construction it's doing that and the proposed construction afterwards is doing that. Currently a small amount of water may flow toward the new house to the north. However, the proposed construction does not change this with almost all of the proposed drainage flowing either toward Camden Way or Center Street. Uh, so basically, and then he shows, uh, then you'll see the engineering showing where the water's going. So you have the topography showing it on the plan too that was submitted uh, a while ago. When I put in my application, I submitted the uh, plan, the engineering plan showing the topography and the water the way it's going. So Rivlin is saying it has no impact on the drainage there. And in that letter too, it sort of was, um, one of the neighbors says that the drainage was all behind, it's actually wrong, they said it was behind one of the houses. There's actually two drainage basins in Lexington Estates. There's one down by lot eight and one behind uh, three Saratoga. So there's two, not one. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, do any of the members of the board have any questions at the moment? Tim, go ahead. You're on mute, so unmute yourself first. Uh, would the uh, applicant object to having the uh, town environmental person to just review what Mr. Rivlin has submitted? I mean, not necessarily a site walk, but just to double verify. Well, I don't have a problem with that, Tim, but I, the planning board who is who does verify this already did look at this, look at the impact on that. So that's their job, the planning board, uh, who have worked with on this. So if you feel that you strongly want to do that, Tim, I have no problem with that. No, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, you know, I don't mean it strongly. It just it seems like you've added information. So they've already looked at it, is what you're saying, when he submitted this letter? Yes. And... Um, and honest, it, it, I'm trying. I'm. I always. I think I do a pretty good job in the town of East, and I've, I've built. An, I've been building there for 35 years. Um, just to any house that's built uh, on a common way in, or and I, I should say, on a public way in the town of Easton, uh, that is never required. In fact, like Center Street, you see the new homes I'm building on Center Street. I'm building on, on Center Street there also. You see the two houses I got there and on Gary Lane. And when you're on a uh, public road, that's not required. But I did it. And I did. That's why I had Frank Roblin do it, just so you guys can see that. But it's not required um, when you have a, uh, a house on a public way unless there is conservation invo involved, which there isn't here. No, correct, there isn't. Okay. Um, that's all I got. Thanks, Tim. Anybody else yet? Is, is the proposed address of this going to be in on Camden, or is it still going to keep its 415 center? What I have to do, Ryan, is uh, once I have the engineering uh, started, which I'm not there yet, I propose uh, to start on the beginning of April. At that point, then I meet with uh, Rob, the assessor, and he, I bring the plan to him, and then he will give it the address of Camden Way. And then it goes to the building department. He wants, it has to be at a specific time. Right before I put it for application with the building department, I do that. They don't want it beforehand, because what happens if I didn't do it? So they want it to be in process. But it will have a different address. It will not be 415. They don't want they, they're getting. They don't want that in the town of Easton. They always make me change the addresses. 
Phil, just one question from me before I let the, the public uh, ask questions. Um, so just to confirm, is it is it your intent not to include the Lexington State covenants in the deed for the property then? It won't be on the deed on my son's property. Um, the HOA, it's not written that way. Uh, what I'd have to do is, I know what you're saying. You're saying, um, so, am I going to add the covenant to his deed? No, okay. I wouldn't be. What I'd like to do is uh, talk with the homeowners and uh, work out something with them to see, because it's going to, it, everything would have to change. Those houses that are in there are 20 years old. Um, so, like, for instance, is the lampposts and stuff like that that are aging. Why would my son be, would have a new one? Why would he be responsible for fixing 20-year-old lampposts, etc.? That's that's not fair. That's why I really keep, would rather keep it private with them. I'd like to work it out with them. And I, and I can't. I have friends in the neighborhood there. I, I can work it out with them. Okay. Um, why don't I turn it over to members of the public? I, there are quite a few people here. I don't know if everybody would like to speak. I will um, ask that when I do um, bring you on as, as a panelist or, or ask you to, to speak, please state your name and your address before you talk. Um, and direct any questions you may have to the board, and then we can redirect them to Mr. Humphrey as, as needed. Um, so we have one person on a phone number that was first at 929-0980, so. Can you hear me? You're on mute. Uh, whoever was on the call was is muted. Um, so hang on just a second. You can unmute yourself. I cannot do it. Uh, next person up was Tim Heffernan. Good evening, guys. Uh, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Tim Heffernan. My wife Judy and I live at uh, 5 Saratoga, Saratoga Lane in Lexington Estates. Uh, my question has two parts, but I, I wanted to uh, ask Bill the question. Um, do I have to, uh, can I address Bill or no? You can, that... you can ask the question and we'll, we'll go from there. How's that? Okay, good, good. Let's first let me say, you know, um, so I'm the treasurer of the, of the HOA and nobody opposes Bill putting a, a, a home in there. Bill done a, done a remarkable job building the eight homes we have in Lexington Estates right now. Um, and uh, he's the one that established the HOA with specific covenants. So I guess my question to Bill is, you know, um, these covenants, uh, for example, have, you know, all the homes have cobblestone pavers, multiple roof lines, and, and architectural lighting. Uh, the question is, will, will the new home you're building in Lexington, Lexington State be built using the preliminary covenants that you, you set forth in 2001? Bill? And then I have another, a second question for the board. Do you want me to ask that now or you want me to wait? And... You can ask them both now. That's okay. fine. The second question to the board is, you know, should the new home with its new address on Camden Way be subject to the existing Lexington Estate HOA and, and all of its covenants? That's, that's the question. Thank you. Uh, so I think, I think Bill, you, you sort of answered the second question already a little bit to a certain extent. Um, but go ahead and you can you can respond to both questions as you as you'd like. Okay, Michael. I just um, responding to them again. This is a, a private matter that is between uh, myself and the HOA. So uh, for me to bring this before the town before you you guys, uh, it's not something that Walter advised me to hash out over uh, a media town meeting okay so I will I will say this and I and I'm not speaking for anybody else on the board I'm not sure I'm comfortable allowing the, the special permit without knowing what the what the plan is that's just me personally I may come around I may not I don't know but I and I understand what you're saying and I understand what Walter advised you um, but when there's 
And there isn't necessarily opposition to this yet, but if there is, or if it becomes, there does become some opposition, it may behoove you to continue the hearing and meet with the homeowners association before we finalize the hearing. That's just, that's my personal opinion, but, you know, we can go from there and see who else has, has things that they would like to ask. And, you know, we can, we can take it from there if you want. Okay. Well, you have the plan that's there on record. Yep. So you can see that it has the stone in the front, the multiple roof lines, et cetera. There's everything that all that looks just like all the houses that are in there, if not nicer than a lot of the houses that are in there, my opinion. And we're going to, and the changes will be made as we go along. Like the houses that I built in there, um, they all have different uh, architectural features to them. Mm -hmm. so they're not all the same uh, design. They have, but what I did do was when I was building them, is some of them I would use brick, some I would use stone, et cetera. So that's what I'm doing is to match that. I'm going with the high roof lines and the different roof lines, et cetera, on that, as you can see there. So it fits to the covenant of what I was trying to create in there. And I'm doing the lamp post, matching that, et cetera. So I'm doing all of that. The only problem uh, that, and my son does want to join and be part of it. He wants to be part of the subdivision. The only negative that I can't do and I hope you guys can appreciate what I'm about to say and think about this in two parts. One is for my son, the kid who's lived in the town for 31 years and is raising my grandchildren in the, in the town. And I want you to think about the paved driveways in there. I put in back in 2001 to 2003. I worked a deal out with a company for $5 a square foot. They're now $18 a square foot. So I want to ask you for relief on this. My son can't afford a $150,000 driveway. And I don't think there's anybody in the subdivision who could either. Like 20 years ago, I put them in for 30. Now they're five times the cost. So that I cannot do. I'm sorry. I would like to, if I could. If the association, the homeowners, if they would contribute, I will pay you did what it cost me back then if they will come up with the other hundred and some odd thousand dollars to help pay for it. I know they won't. But it's not fair that my son should have to because it's it's ridiculous what they cost now. I can't do it. So, yes, we will be, you can see the plans. They match all the houses that are in there. They're nicer than probably, I feel, a third of the houses in there has better lines. It's going to be worth more money than a third of the homes in there. It's bigger than a third of the homes in there. It is following all the lines that's in there. He will be putting in the lamp. He will be joining the HOA. I'd really like to close this tonight. I'm doing everything that I can to build a nice house for a kid who grew up in the town of Easton. And his dad's, I hope, one of the better res respected builders in the town. And um, that's so, yeah. I'll, but I just don't want to hash it out here, guys. It's, it's, it's not, I was advised not to, but here I am doing it. And um, I, I just feel very unprofessional doing it this way. I'm sorry. I'm going to, um, Tim, are you, are you done or are you? Uh, Judy, yeah. Judy has a question. Hi, I'm Judy okay. Harrison, Tim's wife. I just want to follow up on that because the, the picture of the house that Bill gave with the special permit was, did not have multiple roof lines. Um, it was a straight colonial, like, uh, like 222 Center Street. So, if you could clarify that, because we didn't receive plans, the new plans, the updated plans. Yeah, that was a mistake on my part. I put the wrong one in there, but you have the new one there. Okay. So does it look, Bill, more like the house that's next door, the White House? It has, like, um, one thing we're changing is over the garage. I don't know, uh, Michael, you can't, can they get into seeing the plan online or not really? Uh, they can. I mean, you have to go on to permit eyes and, and that. And I'm trying. I'm still trying to figure out the the share screen function on my. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. I can get the security to. If you don't do it all the time, it's tough. Okay. So I just want to clarify that the house he put in the special permit is not the house he's building. No. Okay. And my second part of the question is. Um, 
the pavers not only do they have a nice a static look but they also help with drainage and as you know you know the two houses on Saratoga are downhill from that house bill and it's that's where the water goes if that's where it drains so that is one of our concerns so would you be putting pavement is that what you're saying yeah well here's two things I can do first of all the pavers that you have there are not are not pervious pavement pavers I don't know who told you that they're not they're pavers and they're impervious pavers so those are just as impervious as the asphalt road that's out there in Camden White those are not those are not pervious pavers okay so the water that hits that deflects it just as fast as asphalt and the reason why is um, when you do pervious uh, pavers what has to happen is they have to be first of all they need stone underneath them about two feet of stone I do them I didn't do them in there because they weren't required and uh, what happens is the pavers are then installed over that and then in between that it's a special type of uh, sand that's put in between them you guys have um, a special type of cement in yours that does not let water pass through them so they weren't built to be pervious they were built they're impervious but what would my but there we go i figured this out is this the right plan bill it is and the only thing that's changing no that's not the right plan that's the old plan that's two 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 okay that's not the one nope Of course, this is taking forever. Keep talking. Okay. So um, the drain, the runoff from the driveway, is Frank Rivlin uh, addressed, is uh, minuscule. All the water is being kept mostly on the lot. Uh, so it's not in any way uh, elevating the water onto uh, the water that's going on the, onto the street right now off the lot is the same amount as the new house that's going to be built. Okay. Th- thank you. Uh, there's a Greg Freeman. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, uh, good evening. Um, Greg Freeman, 419 Center Street. So our property line is about two feet from uh, 415. And our only concern, which Mr. Humphrey partially addressed, was how much frontage was he going to leave between center and the back of his house? Because as he stated, it can be a dangerous little turn. So we were concerned about if a, a large fence or trees or something were, were, were to go up to block that and, you know, the rest of the street as well. No, Mr. Freeman, what, what I'll do is I'll be imitating. I, yeah, so when you're pulling out of your driveway, you don't want to see trees built right out by that stone wall because they're going to block your view. I have to bring, that berm's going to come in. If you'll see right now at um, the Camden Way lot, the berm's going to be about 50 feet off of um, Center Street, and then the big trees will be going in. So you'll be able to see, with no, you won't have a, a vision problem in any way, uh, a line of vision uh, from the trees that I'm putting in. Okay, no, that's fine. It seems like it's roughly about the, the same uh, sight line as for Camden from, from Center Street. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. It's like 420, so yeah, so it is now. No, I, I think that, that was our only concern, just to make sure we could, you know, for safety reasons, we could make sure we see and everything. No, it's, it's tough pulling out of there because of the one direction you're going, I think it's 35 miles an hour, and then the other direction is 45, especially going in front of your house. It's Yeah, it does pick up quick there. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Okay, no, thanks. That was our only, um, our only real concern. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, there's the Adam Woolley. I have that right? Adam, I think you're on mute. Yes, it's recording. All right. Hi, uh, I'm Adam Woolley. I'm uh, on 4 Camden Way. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, one, just curious if there's going to be any. Um, uh, landscaping that will kind of divide or be intended to stay between the properties that abut on both sides 
Uh, and the second part of the question is just who is going to be responsible? Are there any plans for continuing the sidewalk all the way down on the frontage that is on Camden Way? It currently ends essentially at at my driveway and then and then stops. That's all grass there. There also happens to be a, a fire pull box, which I don't know how relevant that is anymore or if, there, if that'll be staying as well. Michael, you want me to answer? Yeah, you can answer that. That's fine. I, oh, I, I'm fine. And, I, and I will tell you this, Bill, I don't think we have the correct plans uploaded. I'm getting the same. We have the same set that I had shared before. So. Yeah, I, I don't know if that would. Yeah, I downloaded them to, today. That's the problem. Okay. Um, shoot. Um, do you want me to see if I can? Oh, we're talking. I don't know. Maybe. I can give it a shot, and my wife can get onto the computer. I, I can get them permanized. See if I can do it real quick. If you if you can, it, while you're if while we're going, that's great. I'll keep an eye open for them. Okay. Yeah. I'll while I'm if talking. Not, we'll, if uh, not, if not, that's okay. It. Okay. No, I can get the. I'll I'll see what I can do. Go ahead. Um. So uh, regarding the um, pull station that's in there, I don't know if it still works. I have no idea. I, I would have to ask the fire department on that. I I don't know if they use them anymore. You know, it's, um, that's a good question. I don't know. But um, I was going to see if I could move that. Uh, I was going to talk to the fire department. I was going to talk to the chief about that, see if I could move it like about 15 feet so it isn't sort of, it's not in front of the house. It's sort of offset. But I want to see if I can move it onto the property line. I was going to talk to the chief about that. But in regards to the sidewalk, um, I doubt the town is going to uh, extend that sidewalk. I don't think they would. I really don't. I'd have to ask that. To, we could ask that at DPW, but I don't think they would. Mm -hmm. okay. Adam, anything further? No, thank you. Uh, and then I guess just the question of the um, was there going to be any landscaping, like trees in between? Because I'm, I'm the property that directly abuts it on yep. Camden. Uh, just didn't, didn't know if you plan on having kind of trees there or what that would look like. Did you, well, you saw that I already did some trees there um, years ago, the uh, Abavides. You notice if you go up your driveway and then to your immediate right, there's a bunch of Abavides going up your property line. Yeah, those, those are on my property line. Yeah, I, I put them in. <laughs> I did those a long time ago. So um, if my son is going to do anything there, I would think um, I got to see what it goes when we get into clearing the lot, what we can do there. It's hard for me to guess at that right now. He'd probably want to put some trees in there, but I don't know which one. Yes, that's it. Which one uh, particular trees he wants to plant in there yet. Um, I bring up my trees from Pennsylvania, uh, the fully grown mature trees when I plant them, they're 20 feet tall. So I have to see if they're going to, how they're going to fit in there. I can't, if I put it in there and it's too big and it encroaches under your property, I don't think you'd be too happy with that. So I might have to even stay with like an arbovite too, because you see how the arbovites I put in there are very narrow in your lot, they're not monster ones. I think they were, I put emeralds in. I can't remember, it was 20 years ago, but yeah, he'll be doing some landscaping to, uh, on both sides of the lots, on both lots, yeah. All right, thank you. That's it. That's uh, it. One, no, one I don't more. know. Hey, Michael, excuse me, I have the plan. Am I, can you see me on the monitor right now, Michael? No. Okay. Your, your, your video's not on. Oh, hold on. Hold on, I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. There we are. You're not obligated to be on video, so. <laughs> That's okay. So I'm going to show you the house plan and then send it to you. Okay. Uh, let's see if you can, can you guys see, let me see. Can you see that right there, guys? Yep. Can everybody see that? It's small, but yeah, we, we can. Wait a second. Let me get, how's that? Let me see if I can do this. Hang on a second. Uh, no, I can't. 
What are you trying to take a screenshot? I can't enlarge your, your screen. Yeah, hold on a second. Everybody can kind of do it on their own if they want. I, I think what I can do is, um, I, let me open up Permanize and send it to you. Give me two seconds and I'll send okay. it. In the meantime, um, Gerard Marsan is on. Um, Attorney Marsan, did you want to talk? Yes, thank questions? you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, Gerard Moss, and I live at uh, 425 Center Street. So I'm about uh, 40 feet from the, my sideline is about 40 feet from this property. And my only comment, really, my only concern would be sight lines going out of my driveway, as Mr. Friedman has expressed. Uh, looking north, the traffic comes fast, and there's a, it, it banks around a little bit of a corner there. So I would be interested in the, in the planning board comments of the uh, buffer zone at Center Street and just some prohibition as against against obstructing structures such as large trees or fences or that sort of thing that would uh, hamper the view or compromise the view when one, when one comes out and looks north on up Center Street. So okay. I think that's it's only a, a, an exiting the driveway concern. Uh, it's better. It's a little better now um, than it was a couple of years ago because I think the tree came down up 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 the ways. But that would be, I think that that's uh, an issue. So that if if there's going to be buffer zone language in the in the permit, if it does issue, that it be worded so as to prevent structures and sight lines, that sort of thing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Michael, my wife's helping me. She's better on a computer with than me. So we're gonna, she's gonna minimize that. There we go. And I'm gonna get this to you. Okay. All right, hold on. Uh, let's see. I might have to reopen it here. Yeah. In the meantime, yes, you guys are working on that. Are there any members of the board that have any questions? Tim? Well, my one first question is procedurally. Uh, I mean, we're voting on the permit per se. Are we, I mean, tying into the homeowners association and the i mean is that our purview in regards to this if the road is actually a public way as they're saying i mean it's not looking at the original subdivision plan it's never you know it was a separate parcel so i don't, I don't know if that's something that i mean how would we normally handle that in a situation it seems like it's like we're voting on the permit and whether or not the uh, HOA and all th these can, things can be worked out would seem to be something that has to be done afterwards or do we can get would you consider conditioning that on the um, special permit it seems like it's beyond our scope is what I'm wondering so so this is a special permit application which means you know there's there's some discretion for the board to grant or not grant the special permit based upon you know whether or not we think it is a, a, a an overburdening of either a the property or, or the neighborhood so i think from that perspective we have the the right to you know hear from the homeowners association and their concerns whether or not we vote to approve it or not approve it um i don't know that we can personally that we can or should condition the the vote on you know, specifically requiring covenants be be included with the with the deed, um, as Bill indicated. Uh, you know, those covenants are twenty years old. Certain certain aspects of those covenants are are still still good, still worthwhile, and others may not be. Um, and you know, it may may involve a an, an overhaul of of the covenants entirely, but. Um, I mean, I think it's, like I said, I think it's certainly within our, our rights to ask and, and certainly hear from the neighbors to find out what their concerns are, as it is with any 
special permit or variance application that comes before us, but uh, whether or not we take that into account. I mean, I've, I've heard some concerns from the neighbors. I haven't heard anybody object to it, so. I haven't heard any objections. I was just procedurally wondering, because I mean, a different situation would be clearly if the was a private way and they would have to get complete uh, permission from the homeowners. Correct. So it's a totally different scenario. I agree. Totally different. All right. Yep. That's yep. all I got. Um, okay. Ryan, did you have a question? Oh, you unmuted yourself. I wasn't sure if that... <laughs> no big deal. Un un unintentional. No, not a problem. Um, over here. A couple, couple more questions from from the uh, public. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Um, hi, it's Judy again. Sorry. Um, so the house, we we pay the homeowners association does pay for the lighting and all the landscaping in the estates. So just to clarify that, so. For that reason, that like we think that that's one of the reasons why it'd be nice if they joined the homeowners association, because they are using they are getting benefits from the. Sure, sure, and I and, and I and I think the applicant had indicated that uh, the intent would be to you know work something out uh, with the homeowners association and allow uh, his his son and, and family to to become part of the homeowners association. I think. You know, as I think you heard, there's obviously some concerns with with some some aspects of it, but not the idea of the homeowners association entirely. So yeah, okay, thank you. Sure, Michael, I did it. Wonderful. <laughs> so if you, go, if you go to under other info, other okay, I'll yeah, pull go it under up other info and see uh, if you can do it. There's only one thing that's changing on, which I'll talk about when you get it. Okay. So oh, while I'm playing with that, there is one one more uh, question from the public. Yes. I believe it is Ms. Bellino. Who is on mute. Hello? All right. Well, let me see if I can pull this up here. You said it's under other bill. Yeah, on other info. Okay. Yep. It should be the bottom one. There'll be you'll see there's four items. One says Billy's plans, and if you keep going, yeah. to the, go all the way to the bottom, Michael. Yep, I got it. It's about as big as when you shared it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but just because you went through the effort, we're going to put it up Thank on you. the screen. Thank so. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah. I don't know how to enlarge it. I apologize. You've got a big... So the thing that's changing is you'll see over the garage there's a dormer over the garage that's going to become a uh, a shed dormer it does we don't like the lines on that okay so that's changing and there's a window up on the front uh the big lodge dormer that little window that's coming out we don't that like one? that no no way up on top the big dormer this way up here. yes yes okay. that's coming out we don't like the lines of that okay so what's happening is also is the siding is changing. So you get the clapboard all around, and then you're going to have up above it in the dormers is going to be actually a, a oversized like shingle, which is more of a modern look. But then you get the metal roofs on the front, etc., and the stone on the front. Okay. Great. It actually emulates a little bit is uh, the Patrick's house, which is in the cul-de-sac Saratoga. Then it has the same bump outs. Uh, as down at lot number, house number eight, down the end, it has the front, of the main house has that front thing I imitated. I don't want to say imitate, I follow it a little bit. We don't imitate in this field. Sounds good. Okay. 
let me uh, stop sharing it for now. Um, Mr. and Ms. Galino, are you there? Maybe if their microphone's not working, they can type it in the chat. Yeah, you, you could try typing it in the chat. They're not on mute, so. And I don't know if uh, Tim or Judy Heffernan had another question. They were briefly had their hand raised, but it's gone now, so. Oh, actually, can. Go right ahead. Okay, just one quick one. Um, the construction vehicles, would they be entering through Center Street mostly? Or just because there are kids playing on the street, little kids with bikes, and would they be trying to push them through Center Street, or would they be coming down Camden Way? Um, it depends on, uh, I think it depends on the guy who lives across the street. Uh, the, uh, I think they're called, uh, it's uh, a guy by the name of Mr. Manuel Pina. Uh, who lives in there, who supplies the lumber. We'll have to talk to him. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, the, sorry, Manny, I know you're watching. But uh, no, I would probably, it'd be easy to come in off the of center street. Obviously, we have to do some work off of, uh, yeah. Yeah. in the subdivision, because we have to put the driveway in, etc. cetera. But um, we can, uh, we'll be bringing, uh, it's, it's going to set up, you'll see the trucks coming in. We're actually opening up uh, a section of the wall that's out on Center Street. Uh, we're going to start, build, we're going to build the, sort of the house backwards. We're going to put the septic system in first and then work our way in. And then we're going to be dismantling the barn uh, that's there. Uh, Will the wall stay, Bill? Because the wall is beautiful. It'll be rebuilt, yeah. We're just taking it down so we can get all the heavy equipment in. Okay. Yeah. We're taking about probably 15 feet. It's just a, um, it's just right now, it's a rubble wall. So you can take it apart by hand and then put it right back together by hand. But that's the easiest way to get in there. It's a straight line to get right into the job site off the center street. Okay. <clears throat> All set? Great, thank you. Um, any other last questions? Anybody on the board with any last questions? Bill, anything else you want to add? Um, I don't, I think we're, we could, I think we're fine. I think um, I'll sit down with, uh, with the members to uh, figure out, because obviously if they're going to be adding somebody to their HOA to cover the fees, um, my son will want to know what those are. And uh, they'll probably, by adding one, those numbers would probably go down a little bit too, you would hope, right? That's yeah, I think I think the, the letter that was submitted, um, you can double check and I'm, don't quote me on it, but was somewhere in the neighborhood of $800 annually. Yep. Um, I did just see a question come in, where, the, where is the utilities? That wasn't one of the things I saw in the letter. You remember that was in it, Michael? Uh, that was a... Uh, in the letter that was sent from the town to you guys, as they asked where the utilities are coming from. The water is coming from Center Street, and the electricity is coming from Center Street and going underground. Okay, perfect. That there's, was no, there's no utilities uh, to this lot on uh, Camden. It's, uh, it's easier to bring them in where they're coming in from right now. Good, good timing, Bill. That, that question was just submitted by uh, Tom Patrick by way of chat. So. Okay. Um, so I think we, I think that's all set. Um, if there are no other questions, I can entertain a motion to close the hearing by somebody on the board. Okay. Uh, I'll move to close the hearing. Uh, motion, motion made by Mr. Curran to close the hearing, seconded by Mr. Cook. All those in favor? Uh, Ryan? I approve. Ron? Yes. Tim? Yes. Ed, unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. And I'll vote to close as well, 5 nothing. Does somebody want to make a motion 
on the application. Uh, Mr. Chair, what do you feel should be included on this as far as, I mean, how would you, I mean, do, I mean I'm mean, i thinking one would be to uh, make sure they don't, you know, obstruct uh, Center Street, which um, he's already said he's not going to, but I think that should be in there. And how do we word, like, that he come to some sort of agreement with the HO? All right, well, well, hold on, hold on. Hey. All right, so I just want to clarify this. I mean, this is a private citizen making a private purchase of a private piece of property that is not part of a development. That is something that beyond what, what Bill has mentioned and his attorney has mentioned, we have no, I, I won't vote for something that says he has a stipulation he has to deal with uh, HOA. That's something between Mr. Humphrey and the HOA. Um, it's a private piece of land. So, in your opinion, we just leave that whole thing off the. Uh, I don't, uh, one, uh, I don't think we. That's outside our purview. The private citizen making a private purchase of a private piece of land uh, on a public way. If it was a private road, that might be a different story. But it's a public road. Well, I agree, but they have kind of discussed that they're going to work things out, so we wouldn't even put that in there, in your opinion? But that's, but that's between Mr. Humphrey and the HOA, and if they come to terms, great. If they don't, great. I, right, I wasn't saying to make it a requirement that they come to terms, but, you know, wouldn't even mention it. Well, if it's not going to be a requirement, why bother mentioning it? Okay, and then the aspect of the, uh, did you think uh, the motion with the, uh, doing his best to make sure he doesn't obstruct the view of the abutters on Center Street. And show, point, point to me at where in the bylaws it says that's a requirement. Let me, let me backtrack because, well, two things here. So the obstruction on Center Street, the house is going to be set back. So what would, what would the obstruction well, on Center Street even be? I say if, if I, I mean, uh, like Mr. Marson, I mean, I, my understanding would be if they were putting up a fence or something like that and block. Yeah, that was what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the I think the intent was, and Bill had Bill had indicated that there'd be some trees in the background. The planning board had had requested that there'd be some vegetative buffer between the house and Center Street, so it doesn't look like it's backing up onto Center Street. No, I mean, it's moving much closer to Camden Way. I just didn't, yeah. you know, I was looking to make a motion, but I didn't know what the, you know, the board felt comfortable putting on it. I can appreciate that. That's what, that's what we're talking about now. So That's why we're having a discussion. Um, I apologize to everybody who now has hands up, but the meeting's closed. Um, unfortunately, we cannot take any further questions or, or comments from the public. I apologize. Um, we're, we're in deliberation at this point. So, I mean, for me, I would make a motion to do it without restrictions. I mean, anything else is between private citizens. Okay. I, I, I tend to agree with you, Ryan, although I recognize this is an, a, a, an unusual situation. It's not a single lot on a public way that's otherwise not going into a different situation. So this is this is somewhat of a unique situation in that you've got a eight unit, eight lot subdivision um, and it, this, this <coughs> doesn't come up that often. So um, well, again, it's, 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 I, I get the questions by folks in, in the neighborhood. I get what folks are saying, but in the end, this is still a private transaction between private citizens for a private piece of land. And I, I don't see, and so it happens to be abutted to a subdivision. I, that's, I don't see where it's in our purview to put any restrictions on that. It is if we don't if we feel like it doesn't meet all the criteria for a special you're permit, right? right? You're 100 percent correct. Yes. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily think it does, but I'm just saying, you know. 
as, as our previous chairs to say, we can we can add any requirement or restriction in if you feel is necessary. Right. So my my motion is to approve without restrictions. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Cook to approve the applicant's special permit application. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. McCall. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Ryan. Ryan. Approved. John. Approved. Tim. Approved. Ed. You're on mute, Ed. Approved. Thank you. And I'll vote to approve as well. Uh, Bill, you're all set. Um, I hope everything works out. I uh, wish you luck on the project, and uh, I'm sure you'll you'll build a beautiful house in the neighborhood. I will. It's uh, not to bend you guys' ears, but it's sort of special. I'm building a house for my son. You remember, I lived at 11 Camden Way. Now my son, who grew up there, is going to be living diagonally from where he grew up. It is sort of special. Yeah. Yep. I'm pretty excited. About it. Pretty excited. Thank you, guys. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate the help. All right. Good luck. Have a good night. And right, thank you, you everyone, uh, who participated as well. I appreciate your, your feedback and your questions. So. Good night, guys. Thank you, everyone. Um, moving on briefly, we have approval of the minutes from our February 9th, 2021 meeting. Anybody want to make a motion on that? Motion to approve the minutes. All right, Tim, uh, motion made by Mr. McCall to approve the minutes from February uh, February 9th, 2021. Seconded by? Seconded. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Curran. Uh, all those in favor, Tim? Yes. John? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ryan? I wasn't there. I don't know that you actually need to have been there to approve the minutes, but we can. Uh, Jeremy, you still around? I am here. Approved. Great. You were. You were there, right? I think I was. You okay. Was. It's fantastic. And I'll approve as well. Um. Anybody have anything else they want to bring up or discuss? Yes, Tim. Not to not to beat this dead horse anymore, but do you think in the future you could even discuss it if it doesn't affect the associate? You know what I mean? It just seems like we're we listen to the people's concerns, but you think it would be better if they we just said, you know, we can approve the lot, special permit for the lot, but where, you know, it doesn't, you know, since it's a public way, it's no longer tying into the subdivision. We could maybe just not even bring it up and just say something they should work out offline and just make that you sort can, of you can and you can't i mean it's you a can, you can. Okay. So the public I'm has a right to, to to come and ask questions and you know it was i thought it was handled well you know both by the public they weren't you know they weren't jumping all over bill and they they were asking legitimate questions and they had legitimate concerns and bill answered as best he could and you know um, and like I said before, I think we can take it into consideration right. for whether it meets the criteria, the neighborhood criteria in particular, as it relates to granting a special permit. But, I mean, I think the applicant clearly wants to be, you know, accepted into the neighborhood and he doesn't want to, you know, rock any boats or anything. So. It, it, it's an even yeah. more unique situation as what, what I was saying to Ryan in that, you know, Bill built the, 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 the subdivision anyway. He lived in there. Um, right. He knows a lot of the people in there. I don't think it's a situation where, you know, he's going to build a, a, a big, you know, a, a house in there that looks different from the other houses in there and that they're ultimately going to reap the benefits of the homeowners association without having to pay any dues towards it. I just, I just don't right. think that's ultimately going to be what happens, but, um, I, I all I would say about all this is that we have to just stick to what the bylaws say about whether a special permit should be granted or not and getting into homeowners associations and their requirements in a circumstance like this uh, I'm not sure is directly relevant 
Fair enough. Good point. All right, that's all I had. I just, you know, a little, little tricky one. I mean, as a fairly new guy, kind of, uh, you know, I hadn't seen this one come across before, so. Yeah, no, it's, it's a unique situation where you're adding a lot to an existing, you know, subdivision that has a homeowner's association. Not every subdivision has a homeowner's association. Um, and typically when you have a homeowner's association, you've got a private road and there's, you know, maintenance and upkeep that is required. And that's why you have the homeowner's association. This one's a, just a different, a different. But, but yeah. even at that, yeah. point, for example, when they put a neighborhood together, they submit a subdivision plan, they create the HOA, it's going to include all the members of that subdivision. This is a lot that was not part of that subdivision plan. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was, it was shown as it, on the on the lot it's, or on the plan itself, but it was not um, it was not included in the subdivision. The question becomes if you're adding a, a lot to the road and there are, you know, lots shown on a plan that have certain restrictions, is that, is it reasonable to, is that an overburdening of the neighborhood to, um, you know, add additional houses to, uh, the, the, the subdivision, so to speak, without actually adding them to the subdivision. I think that gets to be kind of a tricky slope. It is. is. It is, no doubt. It, and it's for, a very unique situation. I, for, I, for us, you know, our, recognize that. Our, our job is to interpret the zoning bylaw the protection of other uh, property owners can have. If there's some conformity, so people are not losing value, et cetera. Um, but in this case, I mean, sort of the relief he was looking for was, you know, frontage relief because he didn't have frontage for for a lot. Um, but there wasn't, there wasn't other. Well, there was a little guy on uh, on acreage. Yep. Uh, so that was really what we were dealing with was frontage and acreage. And beyond that, I mean, I think. You know, we have the right to add on anything we think is in the best interest of the town. I just, if you haven't figured out, I sort of protect private citizens' rights. I don't like government creep. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> no, I get that, but I mean, let's say it was, you know, an actual active road that wasn't, you know, or what if the, for another instance, let's say every house in that subdivision. I don't know if you guys golf. Did you ever go to that place in um, Hingham there? The old, uh, what the heck is the name of it? Every house is designed to look a certain way. And if you had a different house, and now this one's going to fit in, but they have some tight covenants in certain subdivisions where every house is, and those might be public ways now. And then you'd have one kind of oddball house. We don't, we're not having that situation, but I could see where that would be a concern. But. No, it was an interesting one. I like uh, I like the little brain puzzle every once in a while. It's a little different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So all good. All good. We, we got where we were supposed to get. So. Does Does somebody need to move to close the meeting? Yes, that was my next yes. question. I think John just did so. I think John did. Yes. I think I I guess John. to close the meeting. Seconded by. I'm usurping. I'm usurping your uh, powers, Mike. I'm sorry. It's cool. Somebody, somebody didn't have dinner yet. <laughs> Me included. Okay. Who seconded it? Closed by Mr. Curran. Seconded by. I seconded. Seconded by Mr. McCall. All in favor, Ryan. Uh, it says I'm all for it. Ed. Hi. John? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right. Thank you, guys. We are closed. Suzanne, anything on for uh, April as of right now? One sign variance. Yes. Oh, correct. Right, right, right. What, is, right. what is the date of that hearing? April 6th. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Have a good night, guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Take care. It. Take care. Good night, everybody. Thank you.